Hello, hello. Today's daily reading comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39. As always stated prior to reading, get to a church that has Bible study or Sunday school where the word can be broken down and shared with you for an easy understanding. Also get with some friends who break bread and just have church with one another and get some understanding. I'll get you a Bible that you can read, numerous versions from King James to NIV. But most importantly and above all things that I've stated so far, call upon the Lord. If you knock at his door, he will answer and fill you up with wisdom if that is what you truly seek. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 39 reads as follows. Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tabal. I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north, send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand on the mountains of israel you will fall you and all your troops and the nations with you i will give you as food to all kinds of carrion birds and to the wild animals you will fall on the open field for i have spoken declares the sovereign lord i will send fire to magog and on those who live in safety in the coastlands and they will know that i am the lord i will make known my holy name among my people israel i will no longer let my holy name be profaned and the nations will know that i the lord am the holy one of israel it is coming it will surely take place declares the sovereign lord this is the day i have spoken of then those who live in the towns of israel will go out and use the weapons for fuel and burn them up, the small and large shields, the bows and arrows, the war clubs and spears. For seven years they will use them for fuel. They will not need to gather wood for the fields or cut it from the forest, because they will use the weapons for fuel, and they will plunder those who plunder them and loot those who looted them, declares the sovereign Lord. On that day I will give Gog a burial place in Israel, in the valley of those who traveled east of the sea, it will block the way of travelers because Gog and all the hordes will be buried there. So it will be called the Valley of Haman Gog. For seven months, the Israelites will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. All the people of the land will bury them. And the day I display my glory will be memorable, memorable day for them, declares the sovereign Lord. People will be continually employed in cleansing the land. They will spread out across the land along the with others. They will bury any bodies that are lying on the ground. After the seven months, they will carry out a more detailed search. As they go through the land, anyone who sees a human bone will leave a marker beside it until the grave diggers bury it in the valley of Haman Gog, near a town called Hamana. And so they will cleanse the land. Son of man, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Call out to every kind of bird and all the wild animals. Assemble and come together from all around to the sacrifice I am preparing for you, the great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel. There you will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, as if they were rams and lambs, goats and bulls, all of them fattened animals from Bashan. At the sacrifice I am preparing for you, you will eat fat till you are gutted and drink blood till you are drunk. At my table you will eat your fill of horses and riders, Mighty men and soldiers of every kind, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will display my glory among the nations, and all the nations will see the punishment I inflict and the hand I lay on them. From the day, from that day forward, the people of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God, and the nations will know that the people of Israel went into exile for their sin because they were unfaithful to me. So I hid my face from them and handed them over to their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanliness and their offenses, and I hid my face from them. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will now restore the fortunes of Jacob and will have compassion on all people of Israel, and I will be zealous for my holy name. They will forget their shame and all the unfaithfulness they showed toward me when they lived in safety in their land with no more, no one to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries, of their enemies, I will be proved holy through them, through them in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. For though I sent them into exile among the nations, I will gather them to their own land, not leaving any behind. I will no longer hide my face from them. 
for I will pour out my spirit on the people of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. Ezekiel chapter 40. In the 20th, in the 25th year of our exile at the beginning of the year, on the 10th of the month in the 14th year, after the fall of the city, on the very day the hand of the Lord was on me, and he took me there in visions of God, he took me to the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain, on whose south side were some buildings that looked like a city. He took me there, and I saw a man whose appearance was like bronze. He was standing in the gateway with a linen cord and a measuring rod in his hand. The man said to me, Son of man, look carefully and listen closely, and pay attention to everything I am going to show you, for that is why you have been brought here. Tell the people of Israel everything you see. I saw a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The length of the measuring rod in the man's hand was six long cubits, each one which was a cubit and a hand breadth. He measured the wall. It was one measuring rod thick and one rod high. Then he went to the east gate. He climbed its steps and measured the threshold of the gate. It was one rod deep. The alcoves for the guards were one rod long and one rod wide, and the projecting walls between the alcoves were five cubits thick. And the threshold of the gate next to the portfolio facing the temple was one rod deep. Then he measured the portico of the gateway. It was eight cubits deep, and its jams were two cubits thick. The portico of the gateway faced the temple. Inside the east gate were three alcoves on each side, and three had the measurements, and the faces of the projecting walls on each side had the same measurements. When he measured width of the entrance of the gateway, it was 10 cubits, and its length was 13 cubits. In front of each alcove was a wall one cubit high, and the alcoves were six cubits square. Then he measured the gateway from the top of the rear wall of one alcove to the top of the opposite one. The distance was 25 cubits from the one par parapet opening to the opposite one. He measured along the faces of the projecting walls all around the inside of the gateway, 60 cubits. The measurement was up to the portico facing the courtyard. The distance from the entrance of the gateway to the far end of, the, of its portico was 50 cubits. The alcoves and the projecting walls inside the gateway were sur surmounted by narrow parapet openings all around, as was the portico. The openings all around faced inward. The faces of the projecting walls were decorated with palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court. There I saw some rooms and a pavement that had been constructed all around the court. There were 30 rooms along the pavement. It abutted the sides of the gateway and was as wide as they were long. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the distance from the inside of the lower gateway to the outside of the inner court. It was 100 cubits on the east side as well as on the north. Then he measured the length of the width of the north gate leading to the outer court. The alcoves, three of each side, its projecting walls and its portico, had the same measurements as those of the first gateway. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its openings, its portico, and its palm tree decorations had the same measurements as those of the gate facing east. Seven steps led up to it. With its portico opposite them, there was a gate to the inner court facing the north gate, just as there was on the east. He measured from one gate to the opposite one. It was a hundred cubits. Then he led me to the south side, and I saw the south gate. He measured its jams in the portico, and they had the same measurement as the others. The gateway and its portico had narrow openings all around, like the openings of the others, it was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Seven steps led up to it, with its portico opposite them. It had palm tree decorations on the faces of the projecting walls on each side. The inner court also had a gate facing south, and he measured from this gate to the outer gate on the south gate. It was 100 cubits. Then he brought me into the inner court, though through the south gate and he measured south gate. It had the same measurements as the others. Its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 20 cubits wide. The porticos of the gateways around the inner court were 25 cubits wide and 5 cubits deep. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated its jams, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side and measured the gateway. It had the same measurements as the others, its alcoves, its projecting walls, and its portico 
had the same measurements as the others. The gateway and its portico had openings all around it. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. Then he brought me to the north gate and measured it. It had the same measurement as the others, as did its alcoves, its projecting walls and its portico, and it had openings all around. It was 50 cubits long and 25 cubits wide. Its portico faced the outer court. Palm trees decorated the jams on either side, and eight steps led up to it. A room with a doorway was by the portico in each of the inner gateways where the burnt offerings were washed. In the portico of the gateway were two tables on each side on which the burnt offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings were slaughtered. By the outside wall on the portico of the gateway near the steps at the entrance of the north gateway were two tables, and on the other side of the step were two tables. So there were four tables on one side of the gateway and four on the other, eight tables in all on which the sacrifices were slaughtered. There were also four tables of dressed stone for the burnt offerings. Each a cubit had a half long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit high. On them were placed the utensils for slaughtering the burnt offerings and the other sacrifices. And double prong hooks, each a hand breadth long, were attached to the wall all around. The tables were for the flesh of the offerings. Outside the inner gate within the inner court were two rooms, one at the side of the north gate and facing south, and another at the south of the south, side of the south gate and facing the north. He said to me, the room facing the south is for the priests who guard the temple, and the room facing the north is for the priests who guard the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who are the only Levites who may draw near to the Lord to minister before him. Then he measured the court. It was a square, a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits wide, and the altar was in front of the temple. He brought me to the portico of the temple and measured the jams of the portico. They were five cubits wide on either side. The width of the entrance was 14 cubits, and its projecting walls were three cubits wide on either side. The portico was 20 cubits wide and the 12 cubits from front to back. It was reached by a flight of stairs, and there were pillars on each side of the jams. Amen.